Hello there, it's Brian Mounts from TurfMechanic.com and the channel you're watching. Today I want to talk to you about repairing your lawn, making it look better without spending any money whatsoever. Except for, of course, the gas that goes into your lawnmower and the cost of water that goes on the lawn. Nothing's actually free. It wasn't that long ago that the lawn that you see behind me looked completely different. Kind of like this. Ooh, just brown. And you know what? This lawn behind me here wasn't that long ago that it looked a little bit like this. Ooh, that's not a lawn at all. The thing is, if you're watching this video, you're probably either a subscriber to this channel already or you're looking for information on how to take a really terrible lawn situation and turn it into something that you can be proud of. I want to take this opportunity right now to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you're new to the Turf Mechanic brand. I run TurfMechanic.com and this channel, and I love my lawn. If you're watching this, you probably already have one, if not more, of a number of common problems that happen in residential lawn settings. You either have bare patchy spots, extreme weedy spots, you have discolored spots, different coloring throughout your lawn, or you have a lawn that just simply doesn't, let's say, wake up from the winter in line with everybody else on your block, or maybe your lawn shuts down too early. Maybe it's only green and nice looking for a part of the year. Whatever it is that you are experiencing in your lawn can usually be fixed, not all the way, but a lot of the way without really spending any money. If you wanna fix any or all of these problems, you don't need money. Well, you kinda of need money to go all the way, but you don't need money to go most of the way. All you really need is a bunch of elbow grease and the desire to get the job done. So let's get into what it takes to start the process of fixing your lawn by spending almost no money at all. The vast majority of problems people see in lawn settings can usually be repaired in the most part, for the most part, by doing three things over and over and over, and you're gonna get about 80, 85% of the way there. The very first thing that you need to do regularly is to water your lawn very deeply and very regularly, but not very often. Lots of people put on their sprinkler for 20 to 30 minutes, two to three times every week. Now, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about putting your sprinkler on once a week for like two or three hours straight. Kind of depends a little bit on how much water your sprinkler puts out, how much water actually makes it onto the ground. But we're talking a very deep watering, very infrequently. Now, the reason that I say that is because if you water your lawn extremely deep once a week, then that means the uppermost layers of the soil are gonna dry out in between each watering session. That's gonna put a little bit of stress on that plant, but it's also going to make the grass plant wanna send its roots deeper into the ground because the water goes deep into the ground and it stays moist down there a lot longer than it does near the surface. The most common way to figure out how much water is going down onto the ground is to put like a can or a bucket or a bowl or something in the lawn during the sprinkler session, make sure that it's got flat vertical sides, like a 90 degree angle from the base of the basin to the sides. That way, if you water your lawn for about an hour, you can measure how deep the water has collected into the bowl. Most lawn scenarios need about an inch of water every single week in the spring and the fall. But during the summer, when it gets particularly hot, you might need more. An inch and a half might be reasonable. It might take you a full four hours to get an inch and a half of, the, of water to go onto the lawn in one watering session. That's not that big of a deal if you're only running your sprinklers once a week. You certainly don't want to do that every two or three days, but once a week is actually quite beneficial for your lawn. Absolutely do not put down a quarter to a half inch of water every week. Make sure it's at least an inch of water every week and during the hottest parts of the summer, go above and beyond. The second most important thing in tending to your lawn and making it better without purchasing products has everything to do with mowing the grass. Now, there are a handful of mowing techniques that you might want to consider doing. You might want to consider sharpening your lawnmower blades yourself in your garage every few mows. That will help your grass fight disease and fungal infection off. 
you might want to look at your lawn and alter the mowing pattern that you do. You know, every other week you're going this way and the other weeks you're going this way. Things like that matter, but they only matter to a small extent compared to the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room has to do with the frequency of mowing. When you pull your lawnmower out more frequently and cut the grass more frequently, then that is going to make the biggest difference in the health of your lawn. Now, it is not uncommon for people all across this country to try to justify letting their lawn go long times between mowing sessions. I would guess that the average homeowner who probably doesn't mow their lawn more than once every week to 10 days. I like to mow my lawn two times a week. And this is particularly important for lawns that are kept short. So the shorter you keep your lawn, the I mean, you have to get out there every two to three days to cut it if you don't want to break the one third rule of grass cutting. Every single lawnmower out there that I have ever seen, if you look in the manual, you're going to find some sort of statement that says don't cut more than a third of the grass blade off at any one time. Uh, let's say your grass is only an inch tall. That means you can't let your your lawn get above one and a half inches before you cut it again because if you cut a third off of that then you're back to one that means your grass can only grow half an inch between cuttings most regular people don't keep their lawns that short uh, a good short lawn for average homeowners is about two two and a half inches uh, which means you can go about up to three and a half inches and cut a full inch off depending on the time of year that might mean you can mow the grass once a week, but you might find that in the heavy growth seasons of the spring, maybe the early to mid fall, you might have to get out there every five days or four days or just settle into a pattern of cutting the grass twice a week. If you cut your grass twice a week, all year long, it is going to perform so much better. You are not going to stress the grass out by cutting too much off at a time. The grass crown is going to train itself to be at a certain level above the soil, and then it's going to have a certain amount of grass blades sitting on top of that. It is healthy, and your lawn will perform better over time simply by doing that. So the third obstacle to have a nice pretty lawn has to do with weeds. This is probably the thing that most people hate the most about their grass. Uh, cutting it is just a regular old chore right up there with washing your clothes and going to the bathroom. Nobody wants to have weeds in the lawn and getting rid of them requires usually a lot of manual labor with digging and pulling and you know just manually pulling weeds out of the ground which is horrible. Nobody likes doing that. Also the other option is to go out there and buy equipment and chemicals, figure out mixture rates and how to spray things and apply uh, weed killers on the ground safely. It costs money and time and there's always a little bit of a danger to you, your family, and your lawn. So what do I recommend? I recommend going out there and hand plucking the seed heads. Just the seed heads off of all of the weeds that you see in your lawn just before you mow. So that means every three to four days I'm going outside with my lawnmower. That also means every three to four days, I am walking my lawn before I take the lawnmower to it. If I see any seed heads floating above the ground, whether they be dandelions or other like weird creeping vining things or thistles or whatnot, all of the different kinds, there's tons of different kinds of weeds. If, however, you just grab the seed heads and pluck them off before you go over it with your lawnmower, your mower is going to cut what weed is there down, but the seeds are going to go in the trash before you ever take your lawnmower to it. Now, most weeds are annual. That basically means that any weed that comes up that is an annual came from a seed. So if you can pull those seeds and get them off of the lawn next year, there's going to be way less seeds in your lawn that are able to turn into weeds. So why take the time and effort to dig them all out now? Just take the seeds off, mow your grass regularly, water it well, water it deep and infrequently, and next year you're going to have significantly less weeds in the lawn without spraying any chemicals, without buying equipment, without 
the manual labor that it takes to go and hand dig weeds out. I mean, nobody wants to do that, so don't try. Regular subscribers to this channel know that I have a pretty good looking yard, but I've been working on this yard a lot over the past couple years. As you see up the hill up there, that yard over there used to be quite rustic. In fact, it wasn't a yard at all. We fenced it in, and when we fenced it in, it actually looked a little bit like this. It was a lot of field grasses and brush, and it certainly wasn't a yard at all. My wife and I had basically decided that we were going to take that yard, or take that space and turn it into a yard. We wanted to expand our territory, so to speak. And since we fenced it in, I cut all the brush down. But since then, all I've been doing is watering and mowing. Six weeks ago, I put a little bit of seed down in some of the dirt patches right here. Uh, so that we have less mud to deal with over the winter. But generally speaking, this is what I'm talking about. I have taken a rustic hillside, natural hillside, and slowly transformed it into a yard simply by watering and mowing and hand plucking weed seed heads. Now they're still popping up. I mean, there's some right there. If I were to mow, I would just grab it and plug it off. Stick it in the trash. Point being is that you don't really need any more product or equipment, no matter what other people tell you. Yeah, if you wanna have the best lawn in your town, you're gonna to have to spend quite a bit of money. But if you just want a respectable lawn that you can be proud of and not spend any more money than you need to, we're talking just gas in the mower and water on the lawn, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you like this video. I hope it's helpful for you. I hope if you're new to this channel that you will consider subscribing. I got more material on this channel that goes into depth on doing all of the little things that we do in our lawns. I've got information about what these products are that people spend their money on. If you ever want to go that route, please hit the subscribe. Please hit the like. Make sure to take a look at this video right up in here. I think that you will enjoy it. And please take a look down in the description. There's going to be some links to some relevant videos for beginners to lawn care, as well as a few helpful and relevant links over on my website that should help you out in your plan for the next growing season. Thank you very much for watching.